It's that wonderful time of the year again, where we close our curtains, we open our laptops, we set our terminals to green on black, we snuggle in our hoodies, put on sunglasses, eat nothing but pizza, drink nothing but coffee, because we're all hackers during Hacktoberfest! Okay, okay, so for everyone who is unaware what Hacktoberfest is, um, it is during the whole month of October where um, there is a big event that is focusing on open source project, basically, and open source contributing, um, which is something that is really near and dear to my heart. It's a big part of my career now, so that is pretty awesome, and I love to get more people on board um, to get to contributing because, you know, it's easy to just consume all the, the mostly free stuff that's out there um, but it's also very rewarding to kind of give something back for the products that you've been using maybe for years in all kinds of apps that have been making you money um, so you know it's it's a good thing to do um, but a lot of people actually I put out a poll on my YouTube channel on the community tab um, asking like hey are you gonna participate um, are you a someone who's new to Hacktoberfest new to contributing um, or is imposter syndrome holding you back? Um, so if you don't know what imposter syndrome is, go look it up real quick, pause this video, come back, and um, we'll, we'll continue from there. I'll wait. Okay, there you are, back, good. Um, and if you want to learn more about imposter syndrome, and if I have imposter syndrome, let me know down in the comments. But it turns out that most people um, right now, the poll remains open forever, I think, on YouTube. But right now, I took this snapshot, and um, a lot of people, the most people that have voted are um, being held back by their imposter syndrome, which is, I totally get it, I understand it, because I've been there. Um, but you shouldn't you shouldn't do that don't do that <laughs> that's basically what i want to say to you um but you know i'm here i'm happy to help you get through that now i already get a lot of dms and, and questions and whatnot as it is um so if you want a little bit of help um uh, please put a comment down this video and um we'll be sure to connect somehow um or in the video description all video descriptions have a link to a discord server that i'm running um so please join there and we can maybe all help each other so uh, back to what is Hacktoberfest. Hacktoberfest is an event. Um, it has a couple of big sponsors, uh, big companies. Um, Digital Ocean is like the biggest one. I think they have given their name to it. Um, Intel is one, and, and there's a couple of other ones as well. Um, it, it runs on projects that are hosted on GitHub and GitLab. Um, so, and if you have a project there that you would like to contribute to, um, you should check if, um, um, you know, they have the right label. We'll get into the, that in a little bit. Um, and whenever you submit a PR, um, it will count towards the four PRs, four PRs, uh, that you need to uh, get a t-shirt like the one that I'm wearing now, but it's limited edition because this says 2020, so this will have one for 2021. Um, you can also, if you want to be more carbon neutral uh, for the environment, you can also choose to plant a tree in your name or a couple of trees. Um, I did both last year because I really wanted to t-shirt, um, but I still felt guilty, so what I did is go to another um, charity and plant a couple of trees, which is, I think, a lot more than Hacktoberfest did for me. Um, so I did both to kind of neutralize uh, the thing that I was doing here. Um, but then you will get the four contributions, four PRs, um, and if they're accepted by the maintainers um, of the projects that you're choosing, then you will get this um, T-shirt. But, you know, that's a nice incentive. But what it's really about is that you will gain experience on how to um, contribute to open source what that's all about and um, you will maybe seek some help seek a mentor seek other resources um, like maybe this video to help you get started um, with contributing to open source um, so that is what it's really about now maybe just let's hop over to a little screen share and see what you need to do to actually get started um, but right before we do that maybe let me just quickly note um, do you want to see a little bit more content about how to contribute to open source how to work some things with github how to do some things with git um, let me know down in the comments and i'll be sure to maybe you know throughout october make a little um oss hacktober themed um videos just for you so let me know and let's hop over to a screen here we are in the hacktoberfest well we're not in the hacktoberfest website well technically i am in the web 
Anyway, we're here at the Hacktoberfest website. Um, you can get there by going to hacktoberfest.digitalocean.com. Um, and basically the big call to action here, of course, is um, start hacking. I will get to that in a little bit. Um, first, let's explore what the other things are here. Um, open source is changing the world one contribution at a time. Um, I kind of agree with that. And, um, you know, because there, a lot of the stuff is open source right now. A lot of people can benefit. Um, but what is really kind of a problem is that we have have more people consuming than actually contributing, um, which which is, you know, it kind of makes sense. I guess it will always be that way, but it would be nice if we can persuade more people to also contribute back and make open source more a social media thing as well, um, where, you know, if, if you enjoy using some open source project, um, then you will also um, consider or at least have the knowledge, right? I think that's a big factor as well. Have the knowledge and the tools to actually contribute something back um, whenever you actually want to. Because what I started with, like, you know, a lot of people are held back with their imposter syndrome or however you want to call it. Um, so I want to take that away. And I think that's also one of the goals of Hacktoberfest to take that away, um, to, to help each other out, to get past that and um, um, see that everyone, you know, has a shot at contributing back to open source because um, you can do it too. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. Um, so there are some links here, home, resources, events. Um, so for other years, there also has been in-person events. Um, I've never been to one, but it's really cool. Um, so you can go there and you will have a lot of people um, where you can interact with and, and share your experiences with and help each other out. Um, but this year, I think everything is virtual because, you know, it's not always still great in the world. Um, so it's going to be virtual. Hopefully we can do in-person one um, again soon. Um, there are some giving, so probably some charity stuff and some FHQ. Um, but there is some information here. If we scroll down here a little bit, um, encourages participation. So maybe right off the bat, I should also give you a little bit of a warning. Um, because actually, let me just switch back to full screen here, because this is important. Um, there has been, I think Hacktoberfest is happening now for a couple of years. And over the years, a growing number of people are participating, which is great. Yay. But also, you know, if more people are coming, then there's also more people coming um, that are doing not so nice stuff. Um, so what would happen is that there would be dedicated repositories where you could add your PRs, which would just, you know, have this one character or this one thing. So basically what would happen is people are spending a lot of time faking contributions to get what? A t-shirt? That's not what this is about. I, I I personally don't get any of the people who do that, really. I'm, I think I'm a very caring, loving guy. Um, I, I understand a lot of points of views, but this I totally do not understand. If you, you could go out, get a t-shirt, um, you know, for less money than you're spending time to create fake repositories and do all these things. Actually, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting angry here just thinking about it. So stop that. And also if you're doing this, I mean, if people would only do it on the repositories um, that they were creating for themselves, then that's something, you know, that's fine. You're not bothering um, anyone with it. But what people would also do is spam like bigger projects, um, um, spam them with all kinds of tiny PRs, fixing a typo in a readme. And don't get me wrong, fixing typos and doing documentation, uh, contributions to open source definitely do not have to be code. Um, it can be anything. But I think you understand that now suddenly um, you wake up for Hacktoberfest and you're going to fix that one typo at a time, also spreading it over multiple PRs so that you get to the four PRs. That's just not great. There should be a voice in the back of your head saying, no, no, don't do this. Please don't do this. That's how the voice in the back of my head sounds. Um, but, you know, so don't do that. And actually, it has been, I think, a big problem for last year. So what Hacktoberfest did is um, um, add a little things where people should opt in because a lot of the maintainers of repositories started um, complaining about like, you know, and rightly so, um, they would get a lot of extra work closing the PRs or sifting through the PRs, which they didn't ask for, right? Hacktoberfest, DigitalOcean, all the sponsors just came up with this brilliant idea of um, stimulating more open source, which is which is fine, which is great, which is a perfect initiative. But all the maintainers were like, you know, we're opted in without being asked anything. And now we have this all this extra work. 
Um, a lot of open source happens in people's free time. Um, so that was not great. So what happens now if you, ha you have to actually opt in as a maintainer? Um, so we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so make sure that the repository you're looking at is actually opted in and just don't be don't be a beep and do valid good contributions um, because what is new this year for hacktoberfest there was a checkbox i've posted it on my twitter account as well you have to agree to do um, good quality pull requests because if you don't and there will be two prs that are rendered invalid by the maintainers they can just say hey this is this is a bogus pull request i don't want this in here if you have two you will be banned indefinitely indefinitely from hacktoberfest so you cannot participate this year or any any other year so please beware of that okay switching back to the screen um, start hacking welcome to well here we are uh, hacktoberfest number eight so they've been doing it for eight years already um, i must admit i only joined for the last two years maybe three years um, so i i was late to the party um, but this is number eight which is really cool um, and there is a lot of information here so giving to open source um, and like i said trees not teas uh, which is a great initiative if you ask me as well but the really um, important thing here is the start hacking button now if i go there um, you will see a step where you can sign up with your github or your gitlab account so that's integrated it will link your account automatically um, i already did that and i'm logged in with my github account so so I can't show you the sign up flow anymore, um, but it's it's not hard. If you click the GitHub button, you will be taken to uh, the GitHub sign in page. Um, if you haven't already signed into your account, um, you have to agree to the things I just mentioned and a couple of things more. Um, you can sign up for the newsletter if that's something what you want, um, but that will take you, if you've done all that, um, I'm sure you can figure that out. It will take you to this profile here, um, which will have your nice little face on it here. And you can see these participant goal, you can see these four, I guess they're flowers, um, which will hopefully light up whenever you um, have a contribution that will um, um, pass the bar and that you did um, good on. So then you can see total in progress, um, edit profile coming soon. It hasn't begun at the time of recording. So um, if you can hold off on your pull requests, just wait a little bit longer. And then during the October, um, you can definitely do that. Now, um, how can you see if a repository is participating? It can be done in a couple of ways. I'm not sure if it's here actually. Um, so let me go back to the resources. So let's see if we can find something here in the resources. Um, everyone is welcome. That's definitely important as well. So that's why I'm also putting this out here, um, offering my help to be inclusive because, you know, like I said, OSS open source software is something that I really like. Um, and I would like uh, for you to like it as well. Um, quantity is fun. Quality is key. So that's the thing that I just talked about. Short term action, long term uh, impact. So um, read all of this um, yourself. Now, let's see what we can do here participation maybe it's in here okay details is open to everyone etc uh, etc et pull request can be submitted to any opt-in repository uh, pull request must contain commit you made yourself um, uh, note a maintainer reports your pull request as spam it will not be counted to a participation um, and if a maintainer reports behavior that's not in line with the code of conduct you will be ineligible to participate um, to get a t-shirt you must get four prs between october 1st october 31st um, and it's only, well, only <laughs> the first 50,000 participants that will get a t-shirt. Um, so here is kind of like the fine print. A repository project is considered to be participating in Hacktoberfest if the Hacktoberfest topic is present in the accepting pool uh, public contributions via pull requests. Um, also, if a um, um, repository, if a project is not, has that topic, I will show you what that is in a little bit. Um, you can, they can also, the maintainers can also label a pull request by adding the Hacktoberfest accepted label um, just on that pull request. And then, you know, that pull request will count as well. So if you have a project that might not be participating, um, but you want that pull request to count, reach out to the maintainers, ask them if they want to maybe slap on that label for your PR and it will count towards um, um, the t-shirt thing as well. Um, so the other side is, you know, if a pull request will have a label with the word spam or invalid, it will be considered ineligible for Hacktoberfest. So if you have a PR out and there will be the invalid tag on it, boom, or spam, um, then that one will not count. And I don't think if you take the label off, I'm not sure if it then will suddenly pick it up again. Um, 
So maybe if that happens, then you have to scratch your, your head and think like, hey, maybe I should do better pull requests or get in touch with the maintainer and see what, what you can do there. Um, okay, so how can you see these topics? Um, I'm gonna show you for, for GitHub, so github.com, um, and this is the Examine Community Toolkit. Actually, I'm not sure if I've added it uh, for the Examine Community Toolkit, so maybe we can just do that um, right now. So here we have a um, GitHub repository, in this case, the Examine Community Toolkit. And here on the right, you can see these blue little thingies, um, which are the topics of a repository. So if it says here, um, Hacktoberfest, then you're good, then this repository is opted in for Hacktoberfest, or you know, if on that one pull request there is the label, that will count too. Um, if you're a maintainer and you're watching this, then you can just go here into the little cockwheel, you can do Hacktoberfest, um, and it will be added like that. Um, so just do the Hacktoberfest one, save changes, and it will be added to your repository and you are opted in. Um, now I think also there is something for maintainers um, here on the website because I think you can register, that's for a first this year, you can register as a maintainer and as a participant. Um, and as a maintainer, you can do some other things um, to actually get that same t-shirt as well. Um, but if you register as a maintainer and a participant, it's not that you're going to get two t-shirts, it's just whichever one you fulfill the, the, the requirements to get that t-shirt um, will win. And um, that is basically it. So what's going on here for maintainers, add the Hacktoberfest topic to your repository, apply Hacktoberfest label, um, you can add a contributing MD, so that's also a very good thing to look out for. Uh, there is a contributing markdown file that should be in the repository of um, the repository of GitHub or whatever, uh, which should give you information on how um, the maintainers would like you to contribute to this project. Um, so that's good information to start with. Um, and choose issues that have a well-defined scope, self-contained, um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here we go, new this year. So you can also get um, um, a t-shirt as a maintainer. We want to thank you maintainers for all the hard work that you do. So that's perfect. Um, criteria for a t-shirt pack. First, you will need to register for Hacktoberfest. That is something that you need to do also as a participant. You need to register. Um, then you go out to the repository that is opted in, do your PRs, and that's it. Basically, I don't think the PRs actually have to be merged. They just have to be open because merging PRs can be a long process. Um, so if you open one, um, that is basically all that you need to do. It's still okay to select other roles if you participate in multiple ways. So that's kind of like whenever you sign up for this. Then on your GitHub, GitLab account, you will need to show that you've completed four or more actions on unique PRs in a repository. Um, so they can be merging the PR, providing an approving review, um, adding the Hacktoberfest uh, accepted label, adding any label with the word invalid or spam. So this is basically from the other side, right? That if you're a maintainer um, and you just, you just participate in your normal flow actually, because you're a maintainer of that OSS project already, um, and you're just, you know, going through the PRs and doing these things. These are things that, um, you know, you do, well, maybe not on a daily basis, but um, on a regular basis, at least, if you're a maintainer of a project. Um, so you just do your thing, and as a reward, you will still get your t-shirt during October. So that is pretty cool. Now, this is the important note that I just um, kind of mentioned. It will be the exact same t-shirt for participants and maintainers. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, and But it will just be one, right? If you have the um, requirements for the contributor first instead of the maintainer first, um, you will still get your t-shirt, but it will only be one. And I think that is about everything there is to know for Hacktoberfest. I mean, sure, you need to know a lot about Git and the project and actually implementing code. Uh, so this was kind of like the very easy part. Um, but you know, what we've seen is if you want to get started participating in Hacktoberfest, which is really a lot of fun, I, I promise you, um, then you have to register at hacktoberfest.digitalocean.com, then find a project that you want to contribute to, find an issue, make sure that the project is opted in um, for participation, um, and then and maybe basically start hacking away. Um, and make sure to, of course, be a good citizen and make those great quality PRs. Um, now, again, um, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if you just want some pep talk to start um, doing this, please reach out to me and I'll be happy to get in touch with you and see what we can do there. Like I also already mentioned, if you want to uh, a little bit of support during October with some videos about Git or GitHub, uh, please let me know what you're struggling with and what you would like to see down in the comments below and I'll see if I can uh, make something for that as well. 
well. Um, other than that, if you've liked this video, please click that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already um, by clicking the subscribe button and I'll make sure to get that premium awesome quality content right to your doorstep um, without you having to go look for it. So that's a plus of subscribing. Uh, maybe check out the little join button to join this channel as a member and support all the things that I'm doing here. And other than that, I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.